There are going to be plenty of fact checkers in every newspaper and every television station in the world. That's not the role, the main role of our moderators. Uh, I think what a lot of liberals would say to that is, is what you just said broken in an age when one of the candidates, President Trump, lies every day. Welcome back, everyone. Just a quick reminder, and you probably don't need reminded about it, but tomorrow night is the big presidential debate that we've all been waiting for. I will be streaming it uh, over at DLive, not on YouTube, of course, and uh, we will be having some special guests, uh, drinking games, and prizes. Go ahead and join us over at the official Drone Tech Politics Discord server, probably around 8 or 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the debates will be starting around 9 p.m. Eastern, and uh, look for a link to Discord in the description or the pinned comment. So, <laughs> like I said, we're just one day away from the presidential debates, and I'm just waiting for something off the wall to happen to get Joe Biden out of the debates. Uh, but so far, so good. However, Biden's campaign operatives in the media are already laying the groundwork to dismiss anything Trump says as lies while covering for whatever comes out of Joe Biden's mouth and declaring him the winner. You can guarantee that no matter what crazy crap comes out of Joe Biden's mouth, that the media will treat it as if it's above scrutiny. That's why we've had all this preparation work done beforehand with the FBI director saying that, oh, any uh, attacks that you see against Joe Biden, oh, that's from the Russians. So just discount any any uh, deg denigration of Joe Biden that you see. Even though this is, a, you know, a presidential election and that's very common. But they're already setting the groundwork for, you know, just basically crowning Biden the winner. And this will be the narrative all day today and tomorrow as the media is setting it up, try, uh, trying to rig the debates for Joe Biden even before they happen. We're going to analyze Stelter and his panel of Democrat Party state media hacks, but first I got a quick message from this episode's sponsor, Noble Gold. You know, if you worked for a company for years before COVID came around and you were let go, you might have left some treasure behind. Your old 401k or IRA could be worth thousands and it's still working for your old firm not you. So if you're a bit uncertain about what the future holds right now, you should call the team at Noble Gold at 1-877-646-5347. And if that's not incentive enough, with each qualifying IRA, you'll get a solid silver five ounce Apollo 11 coin free. So it's worth jumping on the phone and calling 877-646-5347 now. That's 877-646-5347. Will Chris Wallace be empowered to fact check the candidates in real time? We, when we choose moderators, we make very clear to them that there's a vast difference between being a moderator in a debate and being a, a reporter who is interviewing someone. We don't expect Chris or our other moderators to be fact checkers. The minute the TV is off, there are going to be plenty of fact checkers in every newspaper and every television station in the world. That's not the role, the main role of our moderators. Uh, I think what a lot of liberals would say to that is, is what you just said broken in an age when one of the candidates, President Trump, lies every day. Okay, first I want to address those tweets and emails that they kind of popped up on the screen in the intro to the segment. That first email reads, quote, from a devout reader and watcher. Oh, wow. Someone who genuinely reads and watches Stelter, not trying to make fun of him, but actually trying to be informed by him. The email goes on to say, will the moderator be allowed to, quote, rain Trump in? You know, because he was stalking Clinton. Oh, we can't have that now, can we? Democrats should just be declared the victors. All debates are over now. Have you ever noticed how so many of the left strategies revolve around not having to defend their positions and instead shutting down their opposition using a variety of nefarious tactics that don't involve actually having a stronger argument? So right off the bat, you can see that the purpose of this segment and previous segments that we've seen now for the last few months are planting the seed for casting the baits as Trump's a liar, Biden the winner. Declaring Biden the winner before or any debate has even taken place. Because remember, the only legitimate debate is one that's won by a Democrat. 
President Trump lies every day. All right, you got that? Trump lies every day, says Brian Stelter, a guy who lies every single day in service of his employer and his political party. Indeed, what an age we live in when paid political propagandists can get on the national airwaves and blatantly lie about the president of the United States saying completely insane things like he's a Russian agent or he's an existential threat or he lies every day. The first two are just straight up dangerous subversion and gaslighting that only serve to divide the country and give justification for increasingly extremist actions from the opposition party. But that last one is interesting to me for a few reasons. For one, before Trump, it was commonly accepted that all politicians lie. I mean, just check this out. I did a search about politicians lying going back from January of 2000 to December of 2012. And just look at some of these headlines. Six reasons why politicians believe they can lie. Why leaders lie. Uh, there's all these videos about why politicians lie and why it's okay when they do it. And why politicians get away with lying. Why politicians lie and why we want to believe them. I mean, this is, this is from 2012. Uh, why politicians should lie uh, from 2010. Lying politicians. Truth is, politicians just can't help lying. And that's from 2003. Growing up as a kid, I remember that constantly being the go-to in comedy. That a politician is lying when they open their mouth. Does Trump lie? Yeah, maybe. He gets things wrong sometimes, and then the media claims that's a lie. He's also a bit of a carnival showman who laces everything he says in hyperbole. But that's just spin. It's not lying. Spinning is nothing new for any politician. He just does it in a way more open and bombastic way than past presidents have. Democrats and their media just blatantly call all of these lies and then attach these enormous numbers to him so that people will just see the number and not even bother digging into the details. A great example of this is the Washington Post running tally of a bajillion lies told by Trump. When you dig into that, it's really nefarious and misleading. A gigantic portion of these alleged lies are just literally differences of opinion or semantic word games that they then attribute to hundreds and hundreds of statements. Regardless, supposed professionals in the allegedly free press should not be poisoning the well like this before a national presidential debate. But beyond all that, how does Biden get away without the same level or even a shred of scrutiny? Sure, he's a Democrat and the media is an extension of his his party, but the fact is Biden has a long and documented history of lying and plagiarism. In fact, he actually had to drop out of his run for president in 1988 because all of his lies came back to bite him. In a thousand generations to be able to get the university, why is Glennis the first woman in her family in a thousand generations? And I started thinking as I was coming over here, why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family ever to go to a university. Why is it that my wife who's sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Well, a week. Does anybody really think that they didn't get what we had because they didn't have the talent or the strength or the endurance or the commitment? Of course not. It was because there was no platform upon which they could stand. No, it's not because they weren't as smart. It's not because they didn't work as hard. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Let us pledge that our generation of Americans will pay any price, bear any burden, accept any challenge and meet any hardship to secure the blessings of prosperity and the promise of opportunity for our children. But he didn't just plagiarize speeches. No, he also claimed to have taken part in civil rights marches. 
when in fact he never had. Wait, wait, let me take that back. Joe Biden actually did play a part in the civil rights movement in that he was one of the reasons black Americans needed to have a civil rights movement. But it doesn't stop there. No, he actually lied about his performance in law school once, attacking the person who asked about it, as we now know is a common reaction from this child sniffing weirdo. I, I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. The first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. Wrong. He actually graduated 76th in a class of 85 students. How much more cringe can you get than lying about being smarter than you actually are? Not a good look and likely the reason that the media isn't digging up all this old footage. So doesn't Chris Wallace need to have the ability to call BS when he hears it? Some of the topics have raised eyebrows. We'll put the topics on screen. These are picked solely by Chris Wallace, right? So the integrity of the election, the Supreme Court, of course, an obvious topic. And at the bottom there, race and violence in our cities. Some people saw that and said, that sounds very Trumpy. There's this issue about fact checking, Molly, uh, and this issue about Chris Wallace as well. I think Chris Wallace is an exemplary journalist but he works for a news outlet that is more propaganda at this point than it is news. So do you view someone like Chris as having a Fox taint or- Did he just say Fox taint? Fox taint. Uh-huh. <laughs> what? It's Trumpy to discuss the riots that have been going on every day for the last five months now? You see, this is a common tactic by the left-wing media, where they'll ignore stories that cut against their narrative and then claim that anybody who does talk about it is right-wing propaganda. We all know damn well that Brian Stelter nor anybody else in the media will have any problem with these debates being on left-wing networks moderated by Democrat Party operatives. Regardless of what the media allows Biden to get away with at this debate, you can guarantee that there's going to be lots of folks out there like me fact-checking Biden and fact checking the fact checkers you can support me in this mission by hitting that like button sharing this video and subscribing you might as well hit that bell notification while you're at it so you're alerted to all my new content you can support the channel in other ways by checking out the links in the description or pinned comment thanks for watching keep coming back